there are other prognostic factors that we've done a lot of work with that are important. They're important in terms of selecting treatment um, and others that are less important than they used to be. Mutation status, the immunoglobulin heavy chain variable gene mutation status is an important uh, prognostic factor, particularly for patients who are younger and fit and we're thinking about chemoimmunotherapy for. Um, those patients who have a mutated V gene do much better with FCR, and in fact, we may be curing some of those patients with FCR chemoimmunotherapy. Um, so if they have a mutated V gene and they can tolerate FCR and they don't have a 17P deletion, uh, those patients should be considered for FCR. Patients who have an unmutated V gene tend to have a shorter progression-free survival with chemoimmunotherapy where we're talking about giving them treatment and a treatment-free interval. If we're talking about small molecule inhibitor therapy like ibrutinib or idelalisib or venetoclax, um, so um, BTK uh, inhibitor uh, treated patients, PI3 kinase inhibitor treated patients, or BCL2 small molecule inhibitor treated patients, the patients who have a mutated V gene do as well as patients who have an unmutated V gene, or vice versa. Patients who have an unmutated V gene do as well as with uh, those with a mutated V gene. So if we're talking about the small molecule inhibitors, mutation status of the V gene, perhaps not as significant a factor as it is for patients who are getting chemoimmunotherapy. Now, that may change because right now with the chemoimmunotherapy, uh, based treatment, again, we give a defined treatment period and an observation period, and the disease um, usually will come back. For the small molecule inhibitors, for example, like brutinib monotherapy or um, venetoclax monotherapy, for that matter, patients go on treatment and they stay on treatment. So I think it's because they stay on treatment that you don't see a big difference between the unmutated and the mutated cases in terms of progression-free survival. But I think it may emerge as an important feature if we're talking about giving patients small molecule inhibitor therapy that gets them in a good deep remission, and then we stop treatment and we're monitoring them for relapse. And it may be in that setting, again, where patients who have an unmutated V gene, the disease start, is growing quicker and their progression-free survival may be shorter off treatment. Uh, the other features, so for example, 11Q deletion or loss of the ATM gene, uh, those patients do very well with alkylator agent-based chemoimmunotherapy. They also do very well with BTK uh, inhibitor-based treatment. So there are data, more recent data, that have shown that the progression-free survival is actually a little bit better for patients who have an 11Q deletion on ibrutinib than patients who don't have an 11Q and don't have uh, a 17P. Uh, deletion. So 11Q used to be a higher risk feature in the, in the era of small molecule inhibitors, not so much. So we, we pay less attention to the 11Q group than we used to. Um, and then trisomy 12 is, uh, is, uh, is neither favorable nor unfavorable. Um, and 13Q deletion also neither favorable nor unfavorable in the era of small molecule inhibitors. Um, those are the main prognostic factors. There are others, but they're not as useful clinically. So ZAP70, for example, is not really useful clinically these days. We don't, um, we don't use it to direct treatment or to, um, to, mo to monitor uh, in terms of prior to starting treatment. CD38 also, we've had inconsistent findings in our data in terms of how useful CD38 is, and it changes too. In any particular patient, you'll see um, at times they may be negative or, uh, or positive, so it's not as useful a, a marker. Mutation status is very important. Um, it tells us the intrinsic characteristics of the disease for a particular patient, and we divide patients into those who have a mutated immunoglobulin heavy chain variable gene and an unmutated uh, variable gene. The determination between those two d requires sequencing of the immunoglobulin gene. All the leukemia cells have the same variable gene in them. You sequence the gene and you compare it to the germline sequence. And if there's more than 2% deviation from germline, those cases are considered mutated. If there's less than 2% deviation from germline, those are considered unmutated cases. 
and the disease characteristics correlate with which category patients belong to, mutated versus unmutated, um, where the mutated cases tend to be more indolent, they grow slower, they respond very well to treatment, particularly chemoimmunotherapy, and they have longer remission duration and longer overall survival. So the biology is a little bit different for the mutated cases than it is for the unmutated cases. The unmutated cases are more proliferative. They tend to have a shorter doubling time. Um, they tend to progress and need treatment sooner, and they tend to have a shorter uh, remission duration. But the, the, the determination of whether or not patients are mutated requires sequencing of the variable gene and comparison of that sequence uh, to the germline. There is one exception, and that is patients um, who have a 321 uh, gene, so it belongs to the subfamily or the family of 321. Those patients have a higher risk disease, so they fall into the category of unmutated, whether or not they're mutated. So if they have mutations in the 321 variable gene, they still behave like an unmutated case despite the fact that they're mutated. And there are markers that associate or correlate with mutation status. As I mentioned, ZAP70 is a marker. Patients who are ZAP70 tend to be unmutated. And patients who are ZAP70 negative tend to have a mutated V gene. CD38 also has been reported, but it's less highly correlated in our experience because, again, patients can change their expression levels of CD38 and um, cross between positive and negative over time.